Hi, my name is Mark Parker. I'm a writer in the Microsoft Link product group. I've created this video to show you how you can incorporate voice XML speech recognition and speech synthesis capabilities into an application that is created using the UCMA 3.0 core SDK. In this video, we'll look at a UCMA application that I wrote that loads a voice XML document and then proceeds to run the document. This video is closely related to the MSDN technical article using voice XML in a UCMA 3.0 application. I'll provide the URL later in this video. This video is aimed at c -sharp developers who are interested in using the UCMA 3.0 core SDK to create an application that performs speech recognition and synthesis. The UCMA 3.0 application that I'll demonstrate in this video creates and establishes a user endpoint object and then waits for an incoming audio call. After an incoming call arrives, the UCMA application loads a voice XML document and runs it. The focus of this video is on the voice XML document, the JavaScript code that is embedded in the voice XML document, and the SRGS XML grammar that is used for speech recognition. I'll also talk about the parts of the UCMA application that are involved in loading and executing the voice XML document. I won't say much about the UCMA application other than to show the parts of it that deal directly with loading and executing the voice XML document. In particular, I won't talk about how to create and start the collaboration platform or how to create and establish an endpoint for the application. I will also not talk about how to handle an incoming audio call. All of these points are covered in the associated technical article on MSDN using voice XML in a UCMA 3.0 application. After I start the UCMA application, I use Link 2010 to call the application. After the application accepts the call, it loads and runs the voice XML document. Here's the recorded audio for a typical conversation. Say the name of a city to find the present time there. Baltimore. The time in Baltimore is 3.11 p.m. This slide shows the high-level structure of the voice XML document. Its main purpose is to obtain an input value for the city offset field. The document contains a form element that has within it a field element. The following sub-elements are contained in the field element. A prompt element that contains the text that will be spoken to the caller. A grammar element that contains the URL of the SRGS XML grammar that is used for speech recognition. This grammar contains the names of a number of cities. Two catch elements that are executed if the specified types of errors occur. A filled element that is executed when the city offset input item is filled. Here we see the details of the form element, including all of the elements that are contained in the field element. This is not the complete voice XML document, as the top level VXML element is not shown and the embedded JavaScript code is not shown. The prompt element contains the text that will be spoken to the user, asking him or her to say the name of the city. The barge in attribute is set to true, allowing the user to interrupt before the entire prompt is played. The grammar element contains two attributes, type and SRC. The type attribute specifies the MIME type of the SRGS grammar. The SRC attribute specifies the URL of the grammar file. The two catch elements are interpreted if the user's speech doesn't match the grammar or if the user doesn't say anything. Each of the catch elements plays its own prompt after which the main prompt is played again. The filled element executes when the user's speech matches an item in the grammar. When that happens, the text in the filled element is rendered as synthesized speech. The two value elements represent the name of the city at the time at that city. We'll look at how these values are created a little later in the video. The exit element within the filled element creates a list of values that is returned to the UCMA application. 
the voice XML document contains two blocks of JavaScript code. The first section initializes some variables and calculates the hour and minute portions of the time at the caller's computer, as well as the time zone offset. The second block calculates the time at the city specified by the caller. Much of the code in the first JavaScript block is taken up with declaring and initializing variables. One of these variables, DST, is a Boolean variable that should be set to true if daylight savings time is in effect. Otherwise, DST should be set to false. The now variable is a date object that contains the date and time on the caller's computer. After the now variable is set, the next several lines of code separate out the local time zone offset as well as the hour and minutes portion of the time. One thing that we need to keep in mind is that the JavaScript get time zone offset method returns the offset in minutes. The purpose of the second section of JavaScript code is to set a value for the time at requested city variable. The JavaScript code initializes the offset variable with the sum of two numbers the offset relative to GMT of the requested city and the offset of the local time zone. The city offset variable gets its value from the semantic value that is returned by the SRGS grammar. The local time zone offset value is in minutes, so to convert to units of hours, it must be divided by 60. For example, let's assume that the user is in Chicago, Illinois, and wants to know the time in New York, New York. City offset will be set to negative 5, and local time zone offset will be 360. Negative 5 plus 360 divided by 60 equals negative 5 plus 6, which is equal to positive 1. So the offset relative to local time is positive 1 hour. The next line of code sets the hour portion of the time in the requested city by adding offset to the hour at the local city. Continuing with the example, if it is 10.15 a.m. in Chicago, the hour portion of the time in New York will be 11. Next, the code adjusts for daylight savings time if necessary and then reduces the hour portion as needed, subtracting 24 if the hour portion is larger than 24 and subtracting 12 if the hour portion is larger than 12. The remainder of the code tacks on the minutes portion and a suffix of a.m. or p.m depending on whether the time is before noon or afternoon. The SRGS XML grammar lists 18 cities in the US and Europe. If the caller says the name of one of these cities, the grammar returns the semantic value that is associated with that city. The semantic value represents the time offset of that city relative to Coordinated Universal Time, UTC. For example, if the caller says Rome, the value returned is 1. This value means that the time in Rome, Italy, is one hour later than the time in London or Paris. Now that we have looked at the Voice XML document and its associated JavaScript code, let's look at the portion of the UCMA application that is involved in loading and running the Voice XML document. The UCMA application needs to do the following. Create an instance of the browser class, which provides access to the resources needed during Voice XML sessions. Register for notification of browser events, the disconnecting, disconnected, and session completed events. Associate the incoming call with the browser instance using the set audio video call method on the browser instance. Start the browser instance using the run async method on the browser instance. To create a browser instance, just call the constructor on the browser class. In this code snippet, we're registering for notification of the disconnecting, disconnected, and session completed events. The disconnecting event and the disconnected event are not raised under typical circumstances. They are raised when the call ends unexpectedly. For more information about these event handlers, see the associated technical article on MSDN. A browser instance communicates by means of an audio video call object. By calling the set audio video call method on the browser, we provide the necessary call object. The final step is starting the browser instance 
using a call to the run async method on the browser instance and passing the URL of the voice XML document. This causes the voice XML document to be loaded and interpreted. The main prompt in the voice XML document asks the user to say the name of a city. When the user responds with a city whose name is in the SRGS grammar, the voice XML document speaks another prompt that tells the time in that city. For testing purposes, I used Internet Information Services Manager to deploy my voice XML document and SRGS grammar file and place these files in a virtual directory. There are a couple of things you need to do before you can run the UCMA application. One, add MIME types for the two files. The MIME type for the grammar file is application slash SRGS plus XML, and the MIME type for the voice XML document is application slash voice XML plus XML. Two, grant read permissions, at least, for the IIS IUSRS group on the local machine. I hope that I have convinced you that you can add speech recognition and speech synthesis capabilities to your UCMA application with only a small amount of effort. Thanks again for taking the time to view this video.